welcome to Webinar Wednesday here at Lulu. I am Chelsea, and I am so excited to have you all with us today. I appreciate you taking some time out of your pre-holiday if you are in the U.S. week. I know this is a busy time for a lot of folks, but I know that it will be worth your time. I am very, very excited for the topic we have today. And so I will just do a little bit of housekeeping, and then we will get right into it. So let's see who gets the gold star today. Who said hey first? Eric. Greetings, Eric. Hey, Kathy, Kevin, Donna, Pete, Gail, Tabiru, Jeffrey, Alan, Martin, Michael, Tanya, Hannah. Hey, everybody. Looks like we've got all of you coming in and telling us where you're from. Uh, Pete's on vacation. You didn't have to rub that in, Pete, but appreciate that little tidbit. So if you are just joining us, let us know where you're from. Today, we are talking about how to speak to sell more books. So are you familiar with speaking? Have you dipped your toe in the speaking pond? I couldn't have probably picked a grosser metaphor to start this, but if you have done some speaking, then tell us about it. If you're new to it, then let us know that as well. So a couple of housekeeping things before we get started. This webinar will be recorded, so you will have the recording sent to your email address within about 24 hours of the end of the presentation. We will also post it to our YouTube channel. Um, I will pop the link in the chat so you guys can find it there if you would like to do that. Uh, Stephanie Chandler is with us today, who is the founder of NFAA. So she has been kind enough to offer to answer questions at the end. So several of you have already found the chat, and I'm excited to see that. You can also see right beside of that is a Q&A only tab. So as we go through the presentation, drop all your burning questions there, and Stephanie will be happy to answer them at the end. Uh, and I think that that's all I've got for some housekeeping here. So I will go ahead and turn it over to Stephanie, introduce her so she could be on her way. Uh, be on your best behavior. You always are. So without further ado, I will introduce Stephanie, who I am so excited to have back. She is always one of our best, well, they're all the best, but always one of the, the best pre pre presenter <laughs> presenters that we have uh, on our webinar series. So always so excited to have her. She has a wealth of knowledge to share, and we're really excited to have this topic today on speaking to sell books. So Stephanie, Stephanie Chandler is the author of several books, including the nonfiction book publishing plan and the nonfiction book marketing and launch plan. She is the CEO of nonfictionauthorsassociation.com, a vibrant community for writers and nonfictionwritersconference.com, an annual event conducted entirely online since 2010, before it was cool, a frequent speaker at business events and on the radio. She has been featured in Entrepreneur, Business Week, Writer's Digest, The Writer, and Wired Magazine, a phenomenal human being all around, and I'm so grateful to her to spend some time with us today. Stephanie Chandler, take it away. Thank you, Chelsea. And thank you to all of you joining us today. It's been fun seeing where you're participating from. I'm in Northern California, just outside of Sacramento in a tiny little community called Folsom. And I love it here. Uh, so I am really extra excited about this presentation. This is the first time I have delivered this slide deck. So that's unusual. I've been doing a lot of the same stuff for a long time, so it was really fun to put together this new deck on how you can leverage speaking to sell books. And this is true no matter what genre you write in. I know I'm a nonfiction person, but trust me, all of you writing fiction, children's books, everything, speaking can be helpful for you. So we're gonna go through some conversation, and my question for you is, do you want to sell one book at a time? And maybe some of you have had the experience of doing a bookstore signing. This was a real live event that I did at the Barnes and Noble up here near Sacramento. And this was for the launch of Chicken Soup for the Entrepreneur's Soul. This was a number of years ago. But we had a ton of publicity the morning of the event. It was a Saturday. We had radio coverage. We had local TV coverage. And Barnes & Noble literally sat us 10 steps inside the door. There were three of us authors who were part of the contributors to this, to this chicken soup series. And we thought, oh my gosh, let's get ready. This is going to be a wild day. And there we were for three hours. The people that you see there look like they're forming a line, but the blonde lady is my mom. I think the lady in pink was a friend of one of the other authors. And long story short, we sold a whopping eight books that morning at the Barnes and Noble. And that was the day I swore I would never do 
another book signing event. Maybe some of you have had a similar experience. We did spend a lot of time directing people to the restroom, however, so that was fun. <laughs> So my question is, would you rather sell one at a time or many at a time? And I love this example here because you can tell this is some sort of trade show. The author has just given a presentation and she has people lined up wanting copies of her book. This is the power. And I've been saying this for years, speakers sell books. <clears throat> Excuse me, we've got allergies going on. Speakers sell books. I would a thousand percent rather give a presentation and sign books at the back of the room than sit in a bookstore and direct people to the restroom. And the beauty of, of life today is that we can do these events in person or we can do them online like we're doing right now. I'm gonna focus on in person for our session today, but know that you can take these skills and apply them to online events. So let's go through some real world examples so that you can get some inspiration here. Cindy Sample is a uh, Sacramento based author. And I will tell you, if you live in Sacramento, you probably know Cindy Sample. She is an incredible book promoter. She self publishes um, murder mystery books. They're all set in local cities like Tahoe, Sacramento, things like that. And she does a wonderful job of getting out in the world and speaking. So here are some of her speaking topics. And notice they have nothing to do with her book. You're never too old to follow your dreams. She actually quit her job to become a full-time self-published author. Yes, really. Uh, the pothole-filled path to publication. She teaches people how to publish her books and then creative marketing for killer sales. I love the tie-in there. So she's done a wonderful job of branding herself. She speaks at a ton of events. And even though her speaking topics may not be directly related to her books, people like her, they like what she has to say, and then they wanna buy her books. Melinda Emerson is a personal friend of mine. She built a massive audience on Twitter many years ago. And this, this accidentally created her speaking business, a full-time speaking business where she can barely keep up with the um, inquiries. And what's really cool about this is she has so many corporate sponsors now. Visa is one of them. Visa paid for her book tour. They sent her to, I believe, six or seven cities across the country, pre-purchased books for the audience and, and actually promoted her book tour. So this is kind of advanced speaking stuff, getting paid, getting sponsors, but it absolutely happens and you can do this too. Shasta Nelson is someone I met at a writer's conference years ago before she had a book deal. She was there with her proposal and her topic is friendship. And who would think that friendship could become an actual corporate topic? She talks about friendship in the workplace and the importance of how that creates job satisfaction. And I think this is such a great photo to have on a website. I mean, look at her speaking to an audience, arms wide open. It's just an incredibly great positioning photo. Keep that in mind. Patrick Schwartfiger is another friend of mine. Now, Patrick is a great speaking success story. So he decided probably eight or 10 years ago that he wanted to leave the mortgage business and become a professional speaker. And he would tell you that that first year he spoke, I believe it, more than 80 events. He said he said yes to anything. He spoke in church basements. He spoke to any group that would have him as a way of building his skills and getting out there so that people knew him. Now, the year before the pandemic, and I have his permission to share this with you, he did half a million dollars in speaker fees. Yes, that's right. So it's been remarkable to watch his career explode. And his website is a really great example for those of you who want to get paid to speak. But certainly he also sells tons of books. And what he usually does is he pre-sells them to the event host and drop ships them to the uh, location. Donna Hartley is another great um, example of an author who sells books. She wrote three memoirs 
about her life experiences. She survived this DC-10 plane crash that you see in front of you. She was one of the last people off the plane. Tragic story, she's a survivor. She also survived stage three cancer and a collapsed heart valve. So she really is a survivor in every sense of the word. And she has built her entire business around keynote speeches. And she speaks a lot on women's health. That's become one of her primary topics that is not about her book, but is loosely related to her books. Hal Elrod is a really fun success story. So he is a motivational speaker. He teaches people how to you know, live happier lives. And he started out speaking at events like Cutco Knives, Mary Kay, a lot of MLM type businesses, but that's where he got his start was speaking for these companies. He did this for years and then his book came out. So think about the order of this. He spoke for years, building an audience, building a following, having the attendees of his speaking engagements join his email list. He's a really likable guy. He survived a head-on car crash with a drunk driver and a traumatic brain injury. He's a really remarkable personal story. So he would go and motivate these people in the sales world. And when his book came out, a self-published book, um, on how to really make your dreams come true, it has exploded. And a lot of that is due to the fact that he's built this audience through speaking, and he's also built a network of peers through speaking. So think about this. Every time you go and you speak in an event, you're making connections. You're making connections with the attendees. You're making connections with the people who brought you in to speak. Chelsea brought me here to, to do this webinar for you. She and I have been collaborating on projects for years. We have a relationship. And so those are the things that can really help you when it comes to getting booked for future speaking engagements, getting promotions for your book launches and things like that. It's the people that you know. Ali Pleiter, Pleiter, I'm honestly not sure. I do not know her, but I stumbled across her and I thought her site and her story was really interesting. So look at the landing page on her site, speaking that inspires, books that captivate, coaching that transforms. So she's a very prolific writer and she leads with, but she's a speaker. And I'm sure this is one of her top strategies. Look at all her different genres. She writes romance, she writes mysteries and her speaking topics. The momentum secret is about productivity. Uh, stay upright when it all goes wrong is a topic about resilience, the five friends every person needs. So these are vastly different topics, and I don't always necessarily recommend that you have different topics, but if you're targeting different audiences and this is a strategy that works for you, why not? I think this is really fantastic. Now, this story you're going to love. This is Charmaine Hammond, and Charmaine wrote a book about her dog, Toby. And it's all about wisdom from, from Toby. And what she did is decided to put herself on a speaking tour. She went out and she got sponsors. She got a local RV company to loan her this RV you see here. She got a local wrap company to actually wrap the RV all completely free and sponsored. And then she reached out to her network of people that she's known, peers, people she had business relationships with. And she said, I'm coming to your city. Can you bring me in to speak? And she did this for, I think, a month long tour. She went 10,000 miles. She had 40 sponsors. She had sponsors who even provided hotel rooms so that, you know, she could take a break from sleeping in the in the RV. She spoke at schools. She spoke at pet stores. She spoke at corporations um, doing lunch and learn free sessions. She did a ton of speaking and she sold a ton of books along the way. And it's such a great story. It took a lot of coordination. This was not easy. I'm not gonna say this was easy, but it's really impressive what she was able to pull off. So remember what I said about building your network, building your connections as you go through your business as an author. It really is a business. 
And as you speak and as you think about peers and maybe past coworkers or people that you can lean on to set you up for speaking opportunities, I think this was a brilliant strategy. So as a speaker, there really are three primary ways that we sell books. One is at the back of the room after giving a presentation. It's one of my favorite ways to sell books, especially compared to sitting in a bookstore. You can also pre-sell books to your event host. So if somebody's bringing you in to speak, especially companies that maybe have a budget, and again, this is kind of advanced speaking, but I want you to know what's out there. Um, pre-sell copies, maybe you're being brought into an event with 100 uh, attendees and they wanna buy 100 books to give to their audience, fantastic. And then getting the sponsor to pay like Melinda Emerson did with Visa, that's a real thing. So the big question is, what are you going to speak about? How are you going to engage audiences? I really believe in knowing who your target audience is. To me, this is the foundation of everything we do as authors. Who is your target re reader? What do they care about? And where can you find and connect with them? What are their needs? What are their challenges? What are your interests? Their interests. If you think about Cindy Sample, the one that writes um, mysteries, and she does a lot of speaking about, you know, creating your next act later in life. That's a great example of somebody who writes fiction and she's not able to really speak about the book itself, but she's able to attract an audience of people who are maybe nearing retirement and they have time. They have time to read her fiction books. So think about who is your target audience? What are their interests? What are their needs and challenges? Can you write about productivity? Can you write about travel to the city where your books are, are, are right about? Can you speak about these topics? Travel to where the city is that you're located. I've seen authors do this. San Francisco is obviously a, a great tourist town and I've seen authors speak about travel to San Francisco. Um, and then how can you bring value to your audience? We're never there to speak about our books. That's really rare. Really, you're there to provide value to the audience and selling your books is the, the result of dazzling an audience in some way. So really, the audience is key. And I know for myself, whenever I'm creating a new presentation, I'm always thinking about what does the audience care about? What do they need to learn? How can I answer their questions before they're asked? These are things I usually have somebody in mind when I built this slide deck, I had a particular author in mind that I wanted to show that this is possible for her author business. So with your topics, you want to think about it. Can you teach something? Oftentimes, these are the most popular types of presentations. So what are you teaching? And maybe you're teaching something about writing, how to plot a book, how to write your memoir, how to research genealogy. It could be loosely related to your book. Maybe it's not related to your book at all, but as long as it's appealing to the right target audience and you're bringing, you're bringing your topic to people who will buy your books, that's what's important. And you might have a motivational topic like Hal Elrod. You might um, help people live a better life or get healthier or whatever it is. That could be your topics as well. So I would really recommend that you take from this the opportunity to brainstorm topics. And I really believe titles are everything. So what is going to be a sizzling title that makes people want to attend your presentation? Um, speaking to sell books is the title of this. It may not be a sizzling hot topic, but it tells you what it's about, right? It tells you exactly what it's about. So you wanna come up with really strong titles that are clear, they tell the audience what your speech is about, and then you wanna write a description. And think about the description in terms of what gets copied and pasted into the event program. Because nine times out of 10, that's what's going to happen. The event host is gonna copy the description that you pitched, and they're gonna put it straight into the event program. So you wanna be really thoughtful in the description and describe what value are you bringing to the audience? What are they gonna learn by attending your session? I recommend that you start with coming up with two or three topics. Ideally, they should be 
somewhat related. We've seen examples where they're not always related and that's okay, but what we don't wanna do is confuse the audience. So, you know, for me, I speak a lot about book marketing and things like that. If I had book marketing, speaking to sell books, and then how to raise your aging dog, my audience would be like, huh, <laughs> how does that fit in here? So just be thoughtful in how you come up with your topics. Here's an example from Patrick Schwartfiger's site, very concise. So he's the one that gets very well paid to speak on topics around big data, technology trends, cryptocurrency, things like that. He gets paid really well. And so he has really concise descriptions that explain what he's going to share with the audience. And at the bottom of each description, there's a, there's a button that says, book Patrick to speak about artificial intelligence. You're gonna get the slides so you can read that later. All right, so as we're getting ready to be speakers, what do we need to do to prepare? Step one is to put a speaker page on your website. Yes, it really is that simple. So right now your website probably has a book page, it probably has an about page, it probably has a contact page, and of course it has a home page. We wanna add a speaker page to your navigation. And on your speaker page, you're gonna put your speaking topics, two or three well-crafted topics with a good title and description. You wanna come up with some professional photos of you, even better if you can find one of you speaking on stage or you can set up one of you speaking on stage. You wanna make it really easy for people to contact you. Don't make them go to a different page put a link to contact you right there on your speaker page. You may want to have rates. You may want to, if you're trying to get paid, it doesn't hurt to put rates in there. Um, speaker rates are a really hot topic, but I will say a good starting rate, if you're asking that question, I'm going to answer before you ask it. Uh, and truly this is standard for speakers getting paid by corporations, by nonprofits with budgets, at a minimum, you're looking at $2,500 and up. So yes, that's good news. Uh, if you have them, testimonials from past speaking engagements absolutely go on your speaker page. If you have any videos of you speaking, put those clips up on that page. That helps, especially for trying to get paid because they absolutely wanna see you in action. And by logos, I mean logos of companies where you have previously spoken. If you don't have these things yet, don't worry about it. You can add them as you acquire them with your speaking experience. And then I definitely recommend creating what we call a speaker sheet. A speaker sheet is a simple uh, document that again, lists your topics, your contact information, a bio and a photo. And this is what organizations use to select speakers. So if you're trying to get booked to speak at somebody's conference, when they are evaluating speakers, they are downloading and printing out these speaker sheets. Look how beautiful this one is. They're downloading these, printing them out, and they're sitting at a table with the fellow decision makers going through to decide who they're gonna select as speakers. So it pays to get some decent graphic design. Now, again, these are kind of corporate level events where maybe it's competitive for speaking opportunities. This is a little bit more advanced, but if you really want to elevate your speaking career, this is a smart strategy. So speaker fees, this question always comes up and we can talk about it more in the Q&A if you like. Most events are speaking for free and that's fine if you're there to sell books. Even um, speakers who get paid like I do, we still do a lot of free engagements, right? Um, I am not getting a $10,000 check from Lulu to be here today, but I am happy to speak for free to my target audience and build relationships around speaking. So almost every speaker speaks for free. Sometimes you'll get an honorarium. I just last month, I spoke at a, a local writers group. They sent me a check for $200. I didn't even know they were doing that. It was a nice surprise. Um, trade association meetings, if you're doing a breakout session, so let's say you're speaking at a conference that has you know, concurrent breakout sessions, those are rarely paid, those are free engagements. If you're getting a keynote speaking event, that means you're the headline speaker of a live event 
and it's a company or a nonprofit that has a budget, keynote speakers are the ones that get paid. And in order to become a keynote speaker, you really have to refine your keynote speaking skills. You, you really have to elevate that. So again, this is advanced stuff. We're not here to really cover that today, but it, that is, if that is your goal, know that you really need to hone your speaking skills. And here's some ways you can do that. So Toastmasters is an obvious choice for everybody. There's Toastmasters chapters in nearly every city. You can imagine Toastmasters is a club that you can join. It's the kind of group that meets usually on a weekly basis to practice speaking skills and help you get comfortable. I understand speaking can be intimidating, especially if it's new for you. It's the number one fear next to death is public speaking. So I get that this is not easy for a lot of people. And if you're feeling that way, Toastmasters can really help take away a lot of that fear and help you become more comfortable speaking to people. I think improv classes are a really cool idea. That's where you're kind of learning comedy. You're learning how to think quickly on your feet. If that sounds fun to you or if it's a little scary, maybe you want to think about doing it. There are definitely speaker coaches out there. I'm not one of them. Uh, I love to study other speakers. So go to YouTube and look for some of your favorite speakers. Brene Brown would be one of mine. She looks so natural on stage. That is not by accident. That is practiced. So go watch some of your favorite speakers and then practice yourself. Uh, in my past life, 20 plus years ago, I was a technical instructor. I developed courses and delivered training for a software company. And part of what our job was, was to literally stand in front of an empty classroom and practice delivering our courses. We would do this over and over until we really knew our material. So practice also helps. It removes a lot of the fear. And I will give you my tip. I don't memorize my, any presentation verbatim, but I do like to, to practice an opening and a closing. That's also really helpful if you're worried you're going to get nervous. And for me, when I walk into a huge room, that's when nerves kick in. So yes, even though I've been speaking for years, I still get nervous in big crowds, especially if I have friends or peers in the room that for whatever reason, raises the stakes for me. So if I've planned my opening and I've planned my closing, then I can get go into kind of autopilot and then the blood comes back to the brain and I can keep going. So that's my little personal tip for you. And also film yourself while you're practicing. So years ago when I worked for that software company, they put us through intense speaker training. I had to go to this week long course where we would get up, give a presentation, it was filmed, and we'd go in the back room with a coach and you'd watch yourself. It was painful. But here's what I learned. I wasn't clicking the tip of my pen anymore. I wasn't jiggling change in my pockets. I wasn't swaying side to side or walking in circles. So you really learn to break some of those bad habits when you walk yourself uh, watch yourself on film. It's not fun. Uh, I can tell you that, but it will absolutely make you a better speaker. So how do we find speaking opportunities? There are so many, you won't believe it. First of all, trade associations. To me, this is one of the best opportunities out there. Think of any trade association you can imagine. They have local meetings where you live, and then they probably also have annual conferences or events. And today they're probably doing webinars and online events. That was like the best thing to come out of the pandemic was that we finally adopted online events. I've been doing them for a, over a decade, but I was so happy to see online events finally be adopted. So think about it. Trade associations exist for just about anything you can imagine gardening, coaching, retired teachers. Uh, I've spoken to architects association, consultants groups. I spoke for the rigid plastics packaging manufacturers association. That's a mouthful. 
They're the people that designed the clamshell packaging. Yes, they paid me to do uh, a presentation for them on digital marketing. I've spoken to the Auto Dealers Association, right? So there is an association for just about anything you can think of. Dog owners, cat owners, cat writers. There's a cat writers association, guys. If you're writing about cats, they have their own trade association. Uh, so think about where your audience is spending time and look for trade associations that reach that audience. In your own backyard, you'd be amazed how many opportunities exist because a lot of these are holding monthly in-person meetings or even some of them do weekly or every other week. And then once you find associations, by the way, just get on Google and start searching. For me, I search Trade Association Sacramento, which is my nearest metro area. And there are literally over a hundred results. So you can start there or you can start thinking about the types of trade associations you wanna speak to. And then you wanna look on the association site. Maybe they have a chapter page for that local chapter and see if there's contact information. A lot of times there is. It'll list maybe their current board of directors or their events coordinator or the chapter leader. Whoever it is, you can reach out to that person and pitch yourself as a speaker. You may even find on a conference site, if they have an annual conference, they may have a call for speakers. We wanna look for those types of things about six months in advance, typically. Service groups and nonprofits, another huge opportunity. Go speak to your Rotary Club, your, your Kiwanis, your local chambers of commerce. I mean, where I live, I, there's 10 cities in a 30 mile radius where I could go speak at the Chamber of Commerce. Your Parks and Rec Department. I take tennis lessons through my local Parks and Rec Department. And I always find it interesting to see what other classes they offer, like memoir writing and art classes. This is a photo of me speaking to our local Girl Scout troop. Now, I didn't do this to sell books. I did this because a friend was the leader of that group, and she said, will you come teach the girls how to write? And I was so excited. How much fun is that? And what I hadn't planned on was the parents coming and asking for books at the end of it. So I didn't even bring a single book to sell, but it wasn't my goal. But you can speak to groups. And by the way, the Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, they have big events. They have... They bring in authors. There's just all kinds of opportunities. And then, of course, schools. So if you're writing children's books, you might contact your local grade school, junior high, high school, offer to do it for free. Now, sometimes they have budgets, but if you speak for free and then maybe the children get an order form or they're told in advance that they want to buy the book, I see this all the time. Colleges are also an opportunity. They um, actually do pay speakers typically. Although if you speak in a college and um, maybe a single course. So I've had my books picked up for college courses, which is always so exciting. And then I will offer to come and do a, a, a Zoom with the students just for fun, Q&A. It's great. Who doesn't want to connect with their readers, right? Uh, also spiritual groups. The Unity Churches, in particular, non-denominational church, they love authors. They will host you. If you have a topic loosely related, and it could be a topic on you know, healing or health or wellness of any kind, you can potentially go and tour the individual Unity Churches all over the nation. And then if you're not yet familiar with meetup.com, it's really fun to look on this site. This is a place where people organize events and there's all kinds of events. I mean, there's there's casual events like Bunko groups and then there's real estate groups and business groups and all kinds of groups. So get on your local meetup and look for events where you could potentially speak. And then corporate speaking. Now, this is typically a little bit more advanced However, I will say in my past life in the Silicon Valley, we used to get a lot of free lunch and learn events with authors. So maybe somebody would come in and talk about financial planning or insurance or just you know various topics 
where I could bring in my lunch and I'd listen to a 30 minute presentation. And then at the end, I could buy a book if I wanted to. So companies do like these things, maybe for staff development, um, client events. So Patrick Schwartfeger, who I showed you earlier, the highly paid keynote speaker, he had an agreement with a cable company and they would bring him in to speak. He did this like once every six weeks. They would bring him in as a speaker on data trends and they would invite their prospective clients. So he had this high paying regular gig to give an informational talk and the cable company used it to land new clients and give them a reason to come in. So get creative, think about that. For corporate contacts, I love LinkedIn is a great tool for finding them. You wanna search for the company, search for the person who does event planning. You can also call a company operator and ask, you know, who's in charge of um, event planning for the back to school events at Office Depot. So oftentimes the operator will just tell you who that person is. Uh, you can also look at their past events, maybe contact a past speaker to ask if they can connect you and then create Google alerts. Google alerts can help you know, let's say you're going to speak for medical events. You might have a Google alert that says call for speaker medical conference, right? And then you'll be notified when somebody puts out a call for speakers related to medical conference. So usually these come out six to eight months prior to a large event and Google alerts are free. I believe it's alert.google.com. And you can just put out, put in any term you want it to search for. Call for speakers, pet, pet, pet conference, call for speakers, consulting, whatever your topic is, you can follow those calls for speakers. Here's an example. You can also go to Google and just search call for speakers. A lot of companies, organizations have an ongoing call for speakers. And so you'll find them right on their website and they will tell you what they're looking for and how to submit. So how to send your pitch. Brief friendly. Brief friendly is kind of the key to any email pitch because we're all so busy, right? I literally check email with my finger on delete because it gets so much. So brief and friendly. You want to share a link to your speaker page on your website. Attach your speaker sheet if you've created one and just create a compelling pitch. So I put together just an easy example for you. Address the person by name. Hi, Joe, I'm Susie Jones, an author and speaker covering how to get organized at work and home. I'm interested in speaking for the Retired Teachers Association. Getting organized when retired or preparing to downsize can be challenging. I help the audience learn simple steps to make it easier. Here's a link to my site with additional details link to your speaker page. I've also attached my speaker sheet and then ask, are you the right person to ask about upcoming events? If not, could you kindly connect me with the person who hires speakers or who chooses speakers? That simple. Yeah. And I hear all the time from organizers who wish they got more speaker pitches, by the way, same is true of podcasters. Uh, so being ready at events, I use a rolling suitcase personally. I, I always have one full of books. I like to give live audiences a handout, something that they take away with them that has my contact information at the bottom of it, something to help them remember the event, maybe refer back to and keep handy. Uh, bring slides or some sort of notes or something that's going to keep you on track because what we don't want to do is get on stage and go wild and not really keep to a, a, a specific program. Make sure attendees know at the end of your session, you're going to be signing books. And I say be under time versus over. Event planners do not want you to go over time. Before we got online, I asked Chelsea, where's our hard stop? Because I don't want to be the speaker that pisses everyone off and they miss their break, right? So it's better to come in under time and have more Q&A then go over the allotted time, another reason to practice. Plan a professional outfit. I personally would always rather be overdressed than underdressed. Outfits can be distracting. So I tend to recommend something conservative. 
you know, just a core color, something that people aren't just staring at your outfit going, why is she wearing that? <laughs> right. And then good shoes. I don't know about you guys. I'm super clumsy. You will not find me in any kind of pointy heel because I will fall on my face. Uh, and then you want to be ready. So square card reader, PayPal, some sort of card reader that you plug into your phone. I was at a book signing event um, not too long ago where there were four authors. We had just done breakout sessions and they seated us all in this hallway and all four of us were there swiping our square readers selling books. It was really fun. Um, make sure you bring enough books. It's always hard to estimate. If, I mean, if there's 50 people in the room, you're probably not going to sell 50 books. I mean, on average, you might sell 25%, but maybe bring 25 books um, if you can get them there easily. Good pen for signing. This tripped me up once where all I had was this like cheap stick pen. And I thought, okay, I will always bring a nice pen. I bought myself a nice cross pen. So I always have that handy. If you have bookmarks or flyers or any kind of signage, bring that along. Make your table look nice. I always have a, a tablecloth in my um, rolling tote, easel to prop up a book. Sometimes you need tape to put up a sign. Uh, and then, of course, an email list sign up because I'm always thinking about signing up for the email list. So I hope that this helps you and that you find that this is absolutely doable. Even if you feel intimidated by speaking, you're probably going to get asked as you're marketing your book. Speaking opportunities are potentially going to come to you and you want to be ready for them. So this will be your step-by-step -step guide to getting done. Chelsea's going to share these slides with you. And I so appreciate you being here. Please, let's take some Q&A. This was really fun. And thank you, guys. I'm seeing your chats now. Thank you for the feedback. Yeah, as always, no one's surprised. You're getting wonderful feedback in the chat. And Stephanie, thank you so much. That was a crash course of everything from the practical to the obviously things that you've been through, like the not having a pin and making sure that you're wearing comfortable shoes. So I appreciate that you kind of covered the full gamut of what to expect when you are speaking and just some things that you may not think about going into it. So everybody, feel free to drop your questions in the Q&A. I know a few of you already have, so we'll grab those. And as you are dropping those in there, I do have a question for you. This is a bit of a chicken and egg question, but do you think it's easier to book a speaking spot as an author or is it easier to sell books as a speaker? Is there, is there an answer to that? Yeah, there is an answer. I think it's easier to book speaking as an author. I absolutely believe that companies want authors. It's instant credibility. You know, if you haven't heard that adage, authority begins with the word author. So you really do have credibility as an author to be hired as a speaker. But also the reverse is true. When it, like, imagine right now, if we were all in a live room and I had a book about becoming a speaker. I mean, how many of you would go buy it right now, right? I don't have a book on becoming a speaker, but wouldn't you go buy it right now? So think about just helping your audience, serving them in some way, and you will absolutely sell books. I have to write that down. Authority starts with author. Why did we never think about that? Right. <laughs> another great cool. tip, another great tip. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, we've got some questions in here. I'm going to start with the, the few that trickled in through the chat, then we'll hop over to the Q&A tab. Uh, all right, so Samantha was asking when you were talking about rates, uh, was it 2,500 in, for an hour of speaking? And I think there's good news to that answer, but I'll let you, I'll let you finish that, Stephanie. There is good news to that answer. Yeah, I, so here's the thing. Companies that are going to pay well for speaking are used to paying well for speaking. And this is not your Rotary Club or your Kiwanis group, right? This is a company, a corporation, a large nonprofit. They have budgets for speaking. And honestly, 2,500 is pretty low in the corporate world. So uh, you could jump up to 3,500 or 5,000. But let me just say this. If you are going to charge those rates to be a speaker, you need to be a really refined, solid speaker. You need video on your website. Um, you need to have some credibility built up. So it's a good reason to start out speaking for free and kind of building your experience, building those testimonials, 
all of that is going to help you. But speakers, by the way, yes, you get paid for the one hour speech. They typically will pay your travel expenses. You get more if you're going overseas. Um, you know, Patrick's spoken in Dubai like five times. So there's lots of opportunities um, absolutely for paid speakers. It is a competitive market. I won't say it's easy, but it's absolutely possible. Yeah, I love the advice of start for free. I mean, even when you're talking about going through your own training and as grueling as it is to watch yourself, you know, you're not clicking your pin anymore. You're not saying, um, every five seconds. So starting for free, kind of cleaning up those errors that you may have initially and then start charging that money. So Absolutely. thank you for that question, Samantha. Uh, and then I saw someone else. Oh, Robin asking, how do you negotiate fees? <laughs> so my favorite question, Robin, is what's your budget, right? Because a lot of times they'll tell you. And if they don't tell you, then, you know, here's the thing. You can always negotiate down, but you can't negotiate up. So I would start at a higher rate, start at 5,000 if you're a newer speaker. And if they say, oh, that's way beyond our budget, then say, then what is your budget? Then they tell you, right? Another way to raise the fee is to bundle in books. So oftentimes the speakers are paid out of one budget, but educational materials come out of another budget. So you could say my fee is 5,000 and they say, oh, that's, that's well beyond what we can spend. And then you could say, well, would you do 2,500 and buy 150 copies of the book? Does that come out of a different budget for you? And you see them go, oh, it does. We could do that. So that's one of the tips to negotiating. Perfect. And thank you for that question, Robin. All right. And Donna is asking, what about ebooks? Where do ebooks come into play in the speaker circuit if you're trying to sell some books? You can't really sign an ebook. And, you know, my advice generally is if you're going to print, if you're going to publish in one format, you really should do the other as well. So I'm not a super fan of a standalone ebook. I'm also not a super fan of a standalone print book. Um, try to do in both formats if possible, because a print book um, will open up more opportunities for you. Yeah, I love that yeah. advice. Yeah, it's hard to sign an ebook, and you should have your book in as many formats as you think your readers would enjoy. Yeah. All right. And William is asking, what about self published authors? Is there hope for the self published author in the speaker circuit? Almost all those examples I gave you are self published authors. Patrick Schwartfeger and his half a million dollars in speaking fees is a self-published author. So 1000% uh, make sure your book is well produced, get a great cover, invest in editing, just make sure it looks like a traditionally published book because absolutely these people who are booking speakers, they don't care where your book was printed. They just wanna see that it looks impressive. That's really all it comes down to. So true. We love to see that. And thank you for that question, William. All right. Here's a good one. Uh, Martin is asking, what is the Nonfiction Authors Association? Oh, thank you for asking, Martin. So we're an organization for nonfiction writers. I spoke at tons of writers conferences and still do. And I was so disappointed at the lack of attention paid to us nonfiction writers. So we launched the Nonfiction Writers Conference in 2010 and followed that with the Nonfiction Authors Association in 2013. So we're 10 years old this year. We're celebrating that. We send out media leads every Friday. We have a private Facebook group. We have a massive database of educational content. We have a really awesome community. Um, and we also do courses, book marketing master course, publishing master course, all the things to support nonfiction writers. So if you're interested, please go ahead and check us out, nonfictionauthorsassociation.com. Thanks for asking. Yes, I can vouch for all of that, and especially the courses are fantastic. Um, and so flipping over to the Q&A tab, Mark is asking, how about selling a chapter at a time? And I'm guessing that maybe, Mark, and you can clarify this, but I'm thinking this answer will be sort of similar to the ebook question that when you're speaking, I think having something tangible for your uh, attendees to take or interact with is, is probably a good good move. Absolutely. I think that's really important. And one chapter at a time from a purchase standpoint is, a, is I think, a tougher sell. So I'd rather see you put that into a, a single book format, unless the chapters are totally separate 
and maybe could be printed individually. Maybe that's an option. Maybe they're long chapters. I mean, there's nothing wrong with shorter books, right? Shorter books are actually kind of trendy. Yeah, that's right. Get some novella action in there. Why not? Right. All right. And Tanya is asking, what about international organizations or ideas for speaking? So any tips there if you're looking to tap into the international market? I mean, yeah, it's all the same advice applies here. So international market, look for conferences that are being held in, in uh, international locations. It's all the same. So you're looking for the event organizers. You're, um, they're usually on LinkedIn because that's where most business professionals are and create your call for speakers. If you know of conferences that you want to be part of, you know, sign up for their email list, find out when they're going to put out their call for speakers and get in there early. So it's all the exact same. Perfect. And thank you for that question, Tanya. All right. This is a good one from Michelle. Uh, how is remote work affecting corporate opportunities for speaking? Oh, I love this question, Michelle. It's improved them, right? So we're still seeing this kind of slower rollout of in-person events, but corporations are 100% paying speakers to do webinars. And the typical rate I can tell you is between 2,500 and 5,000. Love it. All right. And this question is a little bit specific, but I know you're a pro, so I'll throw it at you and see what you've got. All right. So Donna is asking, you mentioned your book might be a tool for healing. Can you suggest human service organizations that might be interested in a poetry chat book? Oh, goodness. That's a little out of my range. Um, but a poetry chat book on healing. I mean, you might look at hospitals. You might look at grief groups, um, something along those lines. There's tons of grief groups and, and things like that. So probably just need to do that brainstorm exercise and sit down and think about who would be your ideal target audience. Yeah, I love that. The point that you made, because I think if you know your target audience for your book, then you can probably find or have a good idea of who your target audience would be for speaking or vice versa. So I love the parallels that come with speaking well and doing your research there and then publishing well and doing your research for your audience there. So thank you very much for that question. All right. Pete has a good question here. And I think it's in reference to you mentioned that when you are speaking, it doesn't have to be exactly based on what you wrote a book about. But his question is, is speaking about the content of your book a bad idea as a nonfiction author? Well, I will. I mean, I will say that's a fine line, right? So an example that comes to mind, Bill Cole is an author who just wrote this huge researched genealogy book, and he's reaching out to historical societies, and he's speaking about the results of that research. Now, that makes sense, right? Because they are specifically interested in the information within the book. But I will say most organizations aren't bringing in authors just to talk about their books. They're bringing, you really want to focus on the value you're bringing to that audience. So I guess it depends on the type of book and how you position it. But for the most part, it's more about the audience and the value you bring to them. Yes, great answer. And thank you for that question, Pete. All right, Machinga is asking, how can you arrange a speaking event as a first time author? And I know you kind of covered some of the basics, but any other tips you kind of want to hit on or kind of underscore after this question? Yeah, I mean, as, whether you're a first time author, author or a 20 time author, it doesn't really matter. You don't, they don't need to know that, by the way. You don't have to lead with, I'm a first time author. You don't have to lead with, I'm a self published author. You just lead with, I'm an author and speaker. And here is my topic and start local, start with those free events, the Rotary Clubs. They're, they're so easy to get into, by the way, um, churches, chambers of commerce, things like that. And just, you know, fake it till you make it right. We don't need to talk about our lack of experience. We just step in. And I, I had this boss years ago. I also ended up in software sales. And I remember sitting outside my very first big sales meeting and she looked at me and she goes, walk into that room like you own it. And if you don't have an answer, tell them you'll get back to them. And that's like the best advice in life, right? So just walk in with confidence, send your pitch with confidence, and they don't care how long you've been published. They just want to know that you're bringing value to their audience. Do I sound like a broken record yet? 
No, I, I mean, but I think it needs to be said again because when yeah. you're getting pitches or, you know, even when people come to Lulu for sponsorships or things like that, I really just want to know, do you understand our audience? Again, you add value to it. And then, you know, a, a very well-designed website can go a long way. And like Stephanie said, no one said you have to wave the flag and be like, this is my first time, first time speaker here. Can you, will you have me? So I definitely love confidence is key. Kick that imposter syndrome out the door. So thank you for that question. All right, Tanya has another good question for us. Planners and journals are big right now. Do they translate to speaking engagements too? Or is that geared more towards traditional books? But I think, you know what she, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think maybe what you're meaning by that is like, you know, having a book with words in it <laughs> rather than a journal yeah. or planner. I think a planner, workbook, journal, all of that, maybe a journal, but um, a, a planner or a workbook absolutely counts. You can also tie that into maybe some training of some sort. So I, I don't see any reason why, you, in fact, I can think of a professional organizer who had an organize, a beautiful organizer book um, who I saw speak one time and absolutely that was her one and only book. And it was, it was actually really impressive. People love notebooks and journals. I think that's a great way to get your branding out there and offer something. If maybe you don't you know, maybe you're talking something slightly off topic of what your book is about. And I think that's a great idea. Uh, very good question there. This is a good one from Arlen. Can you find out what previous authors have gotten in regards to speaker fees for a certain place, like a university, for example? I mean, you could reach out to those speakers and ask them. It's not published anywhere. Um, so, I mean, you could also, I'm a huge fan. Get on Google. You know, what does Drexel University pay their pay speakers? Maybe somebody has posted it somewhere, but chances are they haven't. And it, there's nothing wrong with reaching out to a previous speaker and saying, hey, speaker to speaker, would you give me some insight? Yeah, I mean, all they can say is no, right? So don't be right, afraid yeah. to ask. And that could be a, a new connection for you in the speaker world. All right, so we are getting to the end of the hour. I'm going to do a last call for questions. Uh, but I think that your your suggestion to kind of talk about something outside your book is getting getting kind of lost or some people stumped. And Raven is asking, if you have a how-to book, wouldn't you want to speak about that topic? Yes, Raven. Yes, you're absolutely right. So um, if your book is, you know, how to build a house, yeah, you would be speaking on home building, right? So uh, yeah, we were mostly talking about those outside of that how-to space. So it was trying to help create, connect some dots there. But, you know, how to book, I write about publishing and book marketing. You can bet I speak about those topics all the time. So, but I'm not up there going, this is about my book, right? I'm up there delivering value. And by the way, I have a book that talks about this in greater depth. So absolutely. Perfect. And Nikia, thank you for popping this one up again. Is doing a TED Talk a good speaking opportunity? Personally, I think yes, I'll hop in. But it's heck yeah, good. heck yeah. So the difference too, TEDx are the local TED chapters that, that do a call for speakers. The real big TED.com stage is an invite only. So TEDx is what you're aiming for. And TEDx uh, uh, groups are, are all over the place now. And every one of them puts out a call for speakers. So you might go get on their email list. You might create a Google alert, call, you know, call for speakers TEDx. And you can absolutely speak at an entirely different chapter from one near you. Sometimes they will pay for your travel. Sometimes you have to get yourself there. But if you're, you know, I'm in California and I got invited to a TEDx event in Houston, you can bet I would get on a plane and go because it absolutely is a great opportunity. I agree. And thank you for putting that in there twice. And I'm sorry that I missed that one. All right. Shanae may have our last question of the hour. If anyone else has one, just uh, about another minute to drop it in. So she's asking, where do I find trending topics to speak on to be more marketable? You know what? Google publishes trends, trending topics. But I would say I don't focus on trends like that. I think any topic can be trendy, especially when you're focused on your target audience. And I wouldn't recommend picking a topic just because it's trendy. I would recommend picking topics that you'd be passionate about, that excite you. I mean, maybe a trending topic is cryptocurrency. I know nothing about that. <laughs> that so I wouldn't be putting together that presentation. I'm not the expert. So you're probably better off to stick with topics 
that really light you up, that align with the target audience that's going to be interested in reading your book? Yes, great advice. I will say about a year ago, I think I did a small session for on like blockchain for authors and it was potentially underwhelming. So maybe chasing the uh, the trends doesn't always pan out. Uh, but thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. Stephanie, where can everyone find you and connect with you post-presentation? Yeah, thanks again, everyone. Uh, hop on over to nonfictionauthorsassociation.com. I'd love to see you there. Uh, we're also, we have a pretty solid presence on Facebook as well. We're building on Instagram right now, but really enjoyed this. Hope it was helpful and appreciate y'all spending time with us today. Yeah. Thank you so much, everyone. Huge thank you to Stephanie. She brought the noise today. This is a masterclass in public speaking. So again, everyone will receive your recording. I will send the slides out as well. Thank you everyone for your questions and the conversation. Stephanie, thank you so much. I hope everyone has a wonderful Wednesday, a happy holiday if you are in the U.S. and we will see you next time. Goodbye, everyone. Bye, everybody.